Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another quick tutorial for App Inventor. Today we're going to cover the web viewer component and look at some of what it can do. So I add a web viewer component to my main viewer. I'm going to make sure that that will fill the parent. I also am going to add a horizontal screen arrangement to hold a text field and a button. Uh, that text field and button will allow me to change the URL that the web viewer is pointed to. I'm going to change that to fill parent. I'm going to change the text on the button to go. Change the size. Let's change the hint text for the text box to enter URL address. Let's make that horizontal arrangement fill the screen as well. All right. So the basic idea of the web view component is to display a web page inside our App Inventor application. Let's jump over here to our block editor. Back here is a new tab. We'll talk about that in a future tutorial. For right now, we're going to look at the blocks we have added. We have a button, and we have a text box, and we have a web viewer component. Component. Uh, we're going to use that uh, button click to go to a URL, and the URL we're going to go to will be held in the text box text. So uh, let's look at some of the blocks that are available with the web view component. Uh, the first is, and probably most useful, is the uh, go to URL. Uh, that allows us to input a URL that the web viewer component will load into the web viewer canvas. So let's connect this to our emulator. The web view component has a home URL properties that allows us to put in a default URL so that every time the app loads or the web view component initializes, a specific URL uh, is initialized. And we can see that uh, I put a link there to uh, specifically a graphic. My book on Amazon, I just linked right to that graphic on Amazon. We can also see on the emulator here that our hint text tells us to enter the URL address and we have a go button there. I want to show you uh, one of the little catches of the web view component. If I enter an address such as uh, google.com just like that and hit go, we'll see that it says that web page is not available. So I'll make sure google.com is there and click go, still not available. The catch here is that you have to enter a fully qualified protocol handler for your address, www.google.com. Now, you actually wouldn't need the host part there, the www, but uh, you do need http colon forward slash forward slash for this to work. You can see now that it loaded google.com into this web view component. And I can click on uh, links in the web view component to follow them. Let's look at uh, some more things that we can do with the web view component, such as a sanity check for a protocol handler. If we want to make sure that google.com works just as well as httpgoogle.com, we can put in a quick if else statement here into our button click, and we can say that if the text box one text contains the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, then you know, go ahead and plug in the URL and go there. Otherwise, uh, we need to 
build the URL using a join. So I'm going to put in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then that will make sure that regardless of how the end user uh, puts mm -hmm. in the URL, the browser is going to attempt to load it. So we've got that handled. Uh, there's a lot more that this web viewer can do. We can see this can go back and can go forward. And we see go back, go forward. We see the go home as well. Let's look at how you, we would utilize these buttons here. First, we need a button to handle the go forward and go back. So let's put those navigational buttons in here. Let's put in another screen arrangement. And let's put in a couple buttons. A button for go back and a button for go forward. We'll just label them go back and go forward. The go back and go forward will enable us to navigate forwards and back uh, as we would normally in a browser. But let's look at um, how we do that in the blocks editor. Let's pull the blocks editor up. We've got uh, button one, two, and three here. So this is getting a little confusing. Let's go back and clear things up a little bit. I'm going to select uh, button two and rename it to back button. Select button three, rename it to forward button. We'll name this one the go button, although we've already used it. Now we can work back here and have a little better idea of what's happened. So when the back button is pressed, um, we just want to call that web viewer go back. And when the forward button is pressed, we want to call the web viewer go forward. So let's look at that on our URL. You see we now have go back and go forward. So let's try to go to URL. Let's go to CNN.com. Now I didn't put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. There's no protocol handler. But our sanity check here is going to say, hey, there's n that is not in the URL you entered, and so it adds it and calls this second condition here. So here's CNN.com. Scroll down here. Who is Wendy Ding? Well, apparently the wife of someone a lot richer than I am. So I'm no longer interested in Wendy Ding. So I'm going to click the Go Back button. So it navigates me back to the page I was at. Wait, Wendy Ding wasn't bad looking, so I want to get another look. I can go forward. Now, I come to a little bit of a uh, oddity here. I'm going to click go back and go back again. Now we're at the home URL, and if I hit go back now, uh, nothing's happening. Well, I don't want the user to be able to click the go back button unless they can go back. So, we need a check to check and see if the user can go back. How do we do that? Well, uh, when the Go button is clicked, uh, we need to enable the Go Back. So, we can use, from the web viewer, the Can Go Back and the Can Go Forward. for a check. We'll see that it returns a boolean value. Wrong but one here. So this is just a test. So because it returns a boolean value, I can say when uh, the go button is clicked, and I'm going to put another if in here,
this is certainly uh, maybe not the best way to do this, but we're going to do this just to sh show, for example, the use of the can go back. If can go back is true, then we're going to enable that button. So we'll found set the button enable to true. Now we need to disable that go back button by default so that it works correctly. Let's go back to here. So anytime the go button is clicked, the back button is going to be enabled pretty much by default because as soon as we go somewhere, the back button is going to be an option. But we probably want to check that um, when the back button is clicked so that once you can no longer go back any farther, then the button is disabled and the user doesn't keep clicking it. So let's go back here to control. We'll do if again. And if. So if we want to disable that back button, whenever that back button can no longer be used, we'll do a simple test. We'll just do an equals test. So we'll put an equals on there and we'll say if the web viewer can go back equals false, then disable the back button. And we'll change this to false. So, every time that back button is clicked, it's going to test. If the web viewer can go back as false, it disables it. When the forward button is clicked, we need to do a similar test. But probably, if we've gone back, we can go forward. So we can use this same test. If the web viewer can go back is false, can we go forward? Most likely. So let's see if that logic works. We'll enable the forward button anytime the back button is pushed. So let's see if that is efficient programming. We're programming on the fly here. So we'll see if that works. We want to disable that forward button. Let's go back to our emulator. So let's see what happens. CNN.com. You see both of our buttons are disabled now. So we're going to CNN.com. Well, here's something right away. We went somewhere, but our back button is not enabled. So our logic is not working. Let's go look at our logic. So we went somewhere, we went to the URL. Well, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to just go and put the back button enabled um, anytime we go somewhere, right? Because if we go somewhere, then we need to be able to go back. So it looks like we can get rid of this if block here because this test was kind of a silly test. It's just, if we go somewhere, we can go back. Then when the back button is clicked, that's when we do the test. If the web viewer can go back is false, then disable that button. Uh, when you do go back, make sure you enable the forward button. Right? Now, obviously, when the forward button is clicked, uh, we need to use the same sort of test. If the for if we can no longer go forward, then we need to disable the button. So if, and let's put an equals in here. If web viewer, oops, can go forward. Well, let's use the advanced one. That's not the one I want. We'll just grab the button. Yeah, 
if that equals false, then disable the go forward button. Okay, so here we loaded our home URL, which is the graphic um, of my book. Let's see if we can go to android.jwtyler.com. We'll click go. Sure enough, that loaded. Get the keyboard off. Let's click the about. So now we've got a go back button. That seems right. Let's click the go back. Now we've got go forward. We can go back, see if we can go all the way back. Now it's disabled, we can't go back anymore. Can we go forward? We can keep going forward. What we want to see is if the can go forward will eventually turn off. We can no longer go forward. Very cool. So that's a uh, very basic use of the web viewer component using these first blocks here. Can go back, can go forward, go back, go forward, um, and the go to URL. We can also return information from the page and uh, we've got the follow links property that we haven't talked about as well. But that Using just those principles, you can do a lot of stuff in your App Inventor apps. All right, guys, have fun, and hey, build some awesome apps. And check out my book if you want to learn uh, some really incredible things you can do with App Inventor.